On December 12, 2003, Charles Cullen was arrested by the police. Charles worked as a nurse, but not because he wanted to help people. Over the course of 16 years, he would take the lives of over 100 people under his care. We are here this afternoon in the Major Crimes Unit interview room. With us is Mr. Charles Cullen, and we are here today for the purpose of obtaining a voluntary tape statement from Mr. Cullen pertaining to the uh, death of Reverend Florian Gal, which occurred at Somerset Medical Center on June 28th of 2003. We are also here to speak to Mr. Uh, Cullen in reference to several other deaths that occurred at Somerset Medical Center and other medical and healthcare facilities. Charles was born on February 22, 1960 in West Orange, New Jersey. He was the youngest of eight children and his father would pass away before his first birthday. Throughout his younger years and into high school, Charles described his life as being miserable. He was constantly being bullied by his classmates, and even his friends turned on him. He seemed strange to those around him, mostly due to his severe depression. You realize that you're on audio tape and you are being videotaped here. We are being videotaped here. You understand that? Yes. You're okay with that? Okay. Uh, Charlie, what we'd like to first bring up, uh, the first instance we'd like to bring up with you, uh, you understand you've been charged with two crimes, correct? Murder and attempted murder. Murder and attempted murder. Do you understand or do you know who the victims of both those charges refer to? I do now. I and, didn't know the second one until you told me a little while ago. Okay, and that was a woman whose name is Miss Han? That's correct. Jin Han, yes. I believe it is? Yes. Okay, and that was a charge of attempted murder? That's correct. Now, you were also charged with homicide, murder. Yes. And that charge is a result of the death pertaining to Florian and Gal. That's correct. Okay. So you're clearly aware of that, correct? Yes, I am. Okay. As Charles was finishing his senior year in high school, his mother would pass away. Her death would devastate Charles, and he would drop out of high school and join the Navy. Once again... Charles would not fit in and would be bullied by those around him. After only a year of service, a fellow officer would find him not wearing his uniform. Instead, he wore a surgical mask and scrubs and was seated quietly at the missile controls in the submarine he was stationed in. Um, let's talk about the matter pertaining to Florian Gal. Uh, are you responsible for his death? Yes, I am. And. Why is that, Charlie? Uh, because I injected him with a medication, medi medication called digoxin. And let me back up. Let me back up a little bit. I, I may have jumped the gun a little bit. Are you currently employed? No, I am currently not employed. Okay. Where was your last place of employment? I was. Uh, nurse in Somerset Medical Center in uh, Somerville, New Jersey. Um, what was the result or reason for your leaving uh, Somerset Medical Center? Um, they had told me it was because of uh, inaccuracies on my application when I was hired back in September or August when they had, had me sign uh, um, an application. While working during your employment at Somerset Medical Center, what was your primary assignment? I was mainly in the ICU. Um, very occasionally I would be in the CCU, and even more rarely I'd be in the step-down IMCU. What was your job title and description while employed at the Somerset Medical Center? RN Knights uh, staff. RN standing for registered nurse. Are you certified uh, through the state of New Jersey as a registered nurse? Yes, I am. After several years in the Navy, Charles would be medically discharged in 1984. 
Charles decided to become a nurse, and after graduating from nursing school, he started work at the St. Barnabas Medical Center. After settling into his new life, Charles would marry and have two children with, a woman named Adriana. His married life wouldn't last very long before his wife would file a restraining order against him. She claimed that Charles was mentally ill and that he was a danger to her and her two children. Um, how long have you been a registered nurse, Charles? Since uh, June of 87, I graduated my nursing school. I started off as a GN. What is a graduate graduate nurse? Okay. Um, so I had officially taken my boards at that time, but I had completed a uh, a, a course in nursing. Excuse me. Sure. Um, a course in nursing, and um, su successfully completed that, and was recommended by that school to to sit for the boards, which were a couple months later in Atlantic City, uh, New Jersey. Okay. And I did successfully complete that. But during that period of time, when I, while I was a GN, I wasn't allowed to do a lot of things a nurse would. Okay. Um, until I had gotten my license. So I was basically under a nur another nurse's license and assisting with care. Okay. As we go on with this we we're going to go back into uh that time but uh i just wanted to lay a little groundwork uh of your background before we move ahead um, let's go back to reverend gal um did you realize he was a uh, catholic priest yes i did okay and well let me just say, I, I knew he was a priest. Oh, okay. A Catholic priest visited him, but I wasn't sure if the reverend was strictly a Catholic title. I mean, okay. I, I, I believed he was, okay. but I didn't know for sure. Okay. Um, I'm sorry. Do you recall when uh, Reverend Gal was admitted to Somerset Medical Center? Did there come a point during his uh, stay at the hospital that you yourself uh, were his primary nurse? Um, when he was over in the ICU, I took care of him for a couple of days in a row. Um, yeah, but then I hadn't taken care of him since then for after that. I had, so I was taking care of him. I'm not sure how many days I took care of him, but I took care of him couple of weeks before he passed away. Okay. Charles's first set of victims would be from his first job at St. Barnabas. He would administer lethal doses of medication into his patient's IV bags. An investigation would begin into the contaminated IV bags, and Charles would quit his job, fearing that it would lead to him. After finding a new job, Charles would take the lives of three elderly women by giving them lethal amounts of their heart medication. There came a point uh, when you again uh, came in contact with Reverend Gal, is that correct? That's correct. And could you explain to Detective Baldwin and I how that came about, uh, the circumstances, and why that came about? I, he was in the ICU for a while, and then first, um, uh, probably because he, uh, CCU census was low and the ICU census was high. He was eventually transferred over to the uh, CCU. Um, and then I was assigned a shift over in the CCU. And I, he was not my patient, but I saw him over there. He was in one of the end rooms, if I remember correctly. Okay. At that point in time, had gotten a lot worse. Uh, I believe he was both in kidney failure and uh, liver failure. I don't think he was responsive at all, and I, 
believe he wasn't getting sedation, which meaning that neurologically he was not responding even without being sedated. If I remember correctly, he may have been on something, but I don't believe he was. Okay. Are you familiar with Reverend Dell's uh, medication uh, history? In general terms, yes. Meaning I had taken care of him a couple weeks before, um, and I think the, I, I'm pretty sure that I had signed, co-signed when his meds were transcribed onto a medication sheet, which is a procedure that nurses do when you run out of space on one medication sheet and you have to copy them on a new sheet to continue medications. And over the following decade, Charles would be hired and then fired from multiple hospitals. Patients continued to pass away under his care, but he always seemed to avoid any criminal charges. It wasn't until he began working at the Somerset Medical Center in 2002 that he would finally get caught. The hospital began noticing that Charles would be in rooms he was not assigned to. They also noticed that he was requesting medications that his patients had not been taking. The hospital would alert the police as patients under Charles' care began to pass away. After you withdrew the uh, digoxin from the system under another patient's name, other than Reverend Dow, correct? Yes. What did you do then next? I went into the patient's room sometime later that night or morning and, and gave the medication to Reverend Gall. How much digoxin did you withdraw from the Pixis system before administering this to uh, Reverend Gall? I don't remember exactly uh, uh, going by the Pixis entry. Uh, it said two amps, but it was probably more. I don't know if the count was off in the beginning. That was probably three or four amps. And what was your intent when you went through this? Why were you drawing this out? My intent was to give it to the Reverend Gall. For what reason? So he would pass away. Okay. Is there any reason you selected Reverend Gal, uh, to do this for? He was, from my understanding, terminal. Uh, he, his systems were failing, meaning his kidneys, his, his liver, and I believe neurologically he had suffered some sort of stroke. wasn't responsive. I'm not sure neurologically if, if that was the case, but he hadn't been responsive, whether it be medications or a stroke for quite some time. As you saw in this police interview, Charles confessed to his crimes. To avoid the death penalty, Charles made a deal to cooperate with the authorities. On March 2, 2006, Charles would be sentenced to 11 life sentences, and he would be eligible for parole in the year 2388. When they asked him why he did it, Charles claims that each murder was done on impulse and that he spent much of his life in a fog. He claims that his memories of taking the patient's lives are not very clear because he suffers from severe depression. Why is it that you might be a little unable, or why is it so vague that you're unable to recall I, these uh, incidents, these I, most recent incidents in uh, Somerset? I have suffered with most of my life, um, sometimes very severe depression. Um, so a lot of things sometimes get jumbled up as far as remembering things. Okay. may remember things for uh, 
a few days, but after that, you know, it, it just gets foggy and blurry. Which is fine. Understandable. Do you... You indicated that you suffer from depression. Yes. Is there any outside influence, outside voices or anything of that nature telling you to do things of this nature? No, I don't know. Okay, that, that's just a question I have to ask, obviously. I don't hear any voices telling me to do anything. I don't, um, I don't uh, have any sort of second personality. Okay. That would have done anything. Uh, like I said, I just have, for the most of my life, suffered from periods of depression. Okay. While I was in the service, I was having a lot of trouble with alcohol. I, I drank. I had gotten a DW. And I, I don't know what the. DUI, DWI, it's, it's and pretty it, much the same thing. They are the same thing. Just don't I want them to a little bit older, I guess. Um, and needless to say, that wasn't helping, but I was trying to cope with that, with my feelings inside. And they had put me, after a rehab, they had put me on a medication called antabuse, and they told me specifically not to drink with antabuse. That it could cause fatal results. So I purposely took my antibiotics and drank, but I didn't get hospitalized. I just felt very sick. Where you've been in the service for, I think it was three years, and then all of a sudden you realize, my God, I've got a thousand so many days, and I, and I can't leave. I couldn't leave. Mm -hmm. You know, I made this contract with the government. I mean, some of the people in the military, when they get close to their discharge date, start marking the calendar with how many days they have. Right. When you have over 900, it's not a good thing. Um, it's well, just too much. No, I mean, I knew it was years that I had to go. And I knew that I didn't like what I was doing. And I knew that I, I didn't want to be there. And I didn't feel like it was getting me. Just also became disenchanted with my job. My job involved nuclear weapons. Um, and I was in when Reagan took over and, and I was also disappointed that we were going to change from uh, mutually assured destruction or mad posture to a first strike. I remember that day, I remember thinking, my God, I don't want to be a part of this. I eventually did talk to the service people, tell them that I disagreed with striking the civilian population first and rescinded. I told them I didn't want my security clearance, which meant I couldn't do my job anymore. So I did that. And then I was assigned as Mestex Master Arms and finally doing cleaning in the barracks as my job. So um, I never really worked in my field for the past year, year and a half. Okay. Retract back to where we were okay. a little bit. That, that was fine. That was fine. Just one question before we uh, get off the subject of the Navy. I have to ask you this uh, since you went into so much detail about your depression uh, during the time you were in the Navy. Did any killing? Occurred during that time yeah. at all? Yeah. Okay. You never you never yeah. tried yeah. or attempted to kill anyone? I mean, yeah. okay. Some wonder how Charles was able to get away with taking so many lives, and there are many possible reasons to that question. Back then, records were mostly kept on paper and not on computers like they are now. It would have been more difficult to keep track of patient records and even employee history during that time. Most states required healthcare facilities to only report the most severe suspicious death cases, and if a hospital failed to do so, the penalties were very minor. Charles was able to jump from hospital to hospital, 
because employers feared giving a bad reference could trigger a lawsuit. Thanks to Charles Collins, new laws have been put in place to protect hospitals and patients against negligent employees. The, um, we spoke about the, if any voices or anything of that nature, and you indicated no outside influences of any sort or type. You said no, correct? Are you currently under any medication? No. For any health or mental no. uh, condition? No. no. I don't think. Um, have you been under any uh, I medication? Have, I have been. One time I was on Paxil, and one time I was on Zoloft, which are antidepressants. Um, the Zoloft, I didn't stay on very long. Yes. Just wait till you come back, so you don't have to repeat yourself. Uh, Charlie, as you know, we do have an audio tape going side by side with our, uh, I mean, our <coughs> video tape video going tape side, also. side by side. What I'd like uh, to do at this audience. point is I want to change the tape, but I also have been going for a little while here, so I'd like to take a little break for everybody. If anybody needs to use the restroom, we have some food here, uh, we have fresh coffee here, water, you know, whatever we need, so why don't we just take a short break okay. and then. Uh, just note the time and then we'll pick up again. Do you know that? anything about my kids? Yes, and I'll tell you about that in just okay. one second. Uh, so we get going here. I'll okay, uh, for the record, uh, we're going to turn off the audio tape, and the time is now 7.53. I would love to hear your thoughts on this case. Please share them in the comments below. Thank you for watching. I will see you next time here on the Red Tree Crime YouTube channel.